Never let your problems get you down. When your problems come your way, hold your head up high and say, Hallelujah anyhow. Hallelujah anyhow. Never let your problems get you down. If your problems come your way, hold your head up high and say, Hallelujah anyhow. Hallelujah anyhow. Never let your problems get you down. If your problems come your way, hold your head up and high and say, Hallelujah anyhow. Hallelujah anyhow. Hallelujah anyhow. Sometime in life, you just got to say, Hallelujah anyhow. Sometimes what we go through, what we face, what we sense, what's happening with our bank account, finances, what our health, whatever, 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 we have to, you have to say, hallelujah, anyhow. Hallelujah, anyhow. Welcome to our broadcast, Do You Want to Be Made Well? My name is Frank Bodie. We were just talking about, in our first broadcast, we were talking about Jesus Christ's ministry and how Jesus was just so apt to do the very thing that he was supposed to do. He didn't waste time. He gave his instructions to the disciples, sent them off, and he was all about his father's business. And one of the things that we want to look at in regards to uh, the ministry when Jesus was going forth in ministry, I'm sure that there were a lot of people that kind of dis, they, they, not only the Pharisees, but I'm sure there was a lot of people that thought that Jesus should be doing things, other things other than what he was doing. You know, there was people that had their own opinions, but Jesus knew that he was, he, he had a system that the father set. He just, when Jesus came out of heaven down to the earth to work the work the fa that the father sent him, he just didn't just do what he just, just did what he wanted to do. He, the, Jesus says that I, I, I do what I do because I hear my father telling me what to do. So everything that Jesus was doing, it was because of the father, the father God giving him in the instructions. And that's the same thing with you and I today too. We hear God's voice. We sense God's voice. And let me just clear something up with each and every one of us right now when it comes to hearing God's voice. God speaks to us in many, many ways. In the many ways that God speaks to us, it's not basically that the, it's not in a type of monologue. It's not in just words. Or, can he do that? Yes. But so see, when you become who you are in Christ, you know that hey, that those that are born of spirit is spirit. Spirit, and that which is born of the flesh is flesh. So we don't look to God in speaking to us in the same way that someone would speak to us in a natural way. But we know that they can communicate themselves in the natural way, that is, in many types of ways. And so we look for those ways of people communicating to us in those natural type of ways. And so in regards to speaking in the spiritual sense, God allows himself to speak to us in the many different facet ways in the, in the spiritual sense. See, hey, we have no problem people speaking to us in different ways when it comes to the, um, uh, in, the in the natural sense. Notice in baseball, people talk, to, and, and even just, we just ha sign language, hand language, and you know, we, we talk to, we, we, we talk to one another. And then, well, guess what? The minute you step into that spiritual realm, God speaks to you in ways that is not just like the words that you hear coming from my mouth. He will speak to you 
even according to the way that he's so fit that he wants to in the spirit. And you catch it. You understand it. Why? Because you're, hey, because you are of spirit. So many times people say to themselves, I don't hear God speaking. Well, or do you have a set way of that in which how you want God to speak to you? And if he don't speak to you out of that set way that you got set up, that, hey, he didn't speak. So what are you saying? You, hey, you, you're, you're hearing God need to become broader. You're hearing what God has for you. Need to, you need to be open. Your consciousness, your spiritual consciousness need to be open, so open to God that if a pot on the stove was boiling and clinking that you could understand what those, hey, what that, the pot's clinking on top of the stove if God was speaking to you, what he's saying, what he's conveying to you. That which is spirit is spirit, and that which is of the flesh is of the... So in other words, again, if God wants to convey what he's saying to you, he can use anything, but be open to his anything for your life. Can you do that? So Jesus is going forth in ministry, and this is in the book of Matthew, chapter 2. Jesus is going forth in ministry, and the Bible says in verse, in the second verse that, that John the Baptist, at this time when Jesus gives his instructions to the disciples, John is in prison. John is locked up in prison, um, and he heard what Jesus was doing, that Jesus was preaching and teaching and so forth and so on. And so because of Jesus doing what he was doing, John, can you imagine? Have you ever been locked up in prison? I've never been locked up in prison. Well, let me just say it to another way. You don't have to be locked up in prison, but you can be going through a situation that you just don't like. And I'm sure everybody could relate to that. Have you ever gone through something that you just don't like or just didn't like? And it just didn't feel good. And you knew that at any A, that, that the doctors couldn't do anything about it. You knew, or you, you needed money and you, A, you just didn't like being locked up with that, not having money. Just didn't like that feeling. Just didn't like going through that situation. You, you just didn't like it. You know, whether if it was money, whether if it was your health, you, you just didn't like it. Whether if it was prison, you just didn't like it. You just didn't like it. And see, John at this particular time was in prison. And he had heard that Jesus was, was about doing ministry. And so John, on the other hand, went to his disciples. And he was telling his disciples, he was saying to his disciples, listen, I'm hearing all these things what Jesus is doing. Jesus is preaching. Jesus is teaching. And here I am in jail. Here I am in prison. What would you say? What do you, what do you say? What do you say when you're going through something that's hey, that you just don't like going through? You just wouldn't like going through. You just don't like going through for that matter. What do you say when you're going through something in your own personal life that you just don't like what's going on and it seems like you're not getting no help? It seems like no one around you is, they're all powerless to help you to deal with the situation that you're going through at hand. What do you do? Because John was at that situation. And John noticed and he heard, the Bible says, he heard that Jesus was out preaching. Jesus was out teaching. And here John is in prison. I'm here, I'm, I, I could imagine John was saying, can't Jesus find something else better to do? Can he find something else better to do? Can he tend to my situation? He's out preaching. He's out teaching. Hey, can he come and help me out with this? Can a brother get some, some help over here? I'm in prison. Plus, I'm your cousin. Your mother, my mother, sisters. So what's going on? Why are you preaching and I'm going through and 
hey, you ain't doing, you're not doing anything to help me out with my situation. Wasn't this the same John that was in the Jordan that was baptizing people? John, this same John was in the Jordan baptizing people, calling the Pharisees vipers. They say that they're, he was saying that they clean on the outside of the cup, but on the inside of the cup, they're nothing but dead men's bones. This is John the Baptist. This is the same John the Baptist that had seen Jesus coming, and he says, oh, behold, behold, the Lamb of God has shown up. So John clearly begins to say in the Jordan while baptizing Jesus that, hey, here's God right here in the flesh whose laces to his sandals that I'm not even worthy to unlace nor to tie up nor to take off. John already recognized all of this. John was telling the people, prepare, because the one that's coming is greater than I am. Behold. Come and get baptized. I'm preparing you for the one that's getting ready to come. That's what John was saying. But now he gets locked up. And now John hears about Jesus doing the work, preaching. And John gets a little bit uptight. You know what? Sometimes, you know, we can be Christians. And we are Christians. But there's times when reality will just hit you right in the face. When a situation will just, that's like driving a car down the boulevard, and then, you know, East Boulevard cars coming, and then all of a sudden you hit, you get hit blindsided. You didn't expect it, and it just kind of woke you up. Well, that's sort of what John went through. John got hit blindsided. He didn't expect it. And now here John's in prison. And he, hey, reality's hitting him in the face. And it seems as though all the things that he had uh, talked about when he wasn't in prison, now it seems as though that it was sort of evaporating when he is in prison. Now John is saying, gee, this, this guy don't see I'm in prison? He, 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 what do you mean? Hey, his flesh is now warring with his spirit or with his, hey, with his conscience, with who he is. Well, who, so what do you say? John was wrestling with the realities behind what he was actually seeing. See, it's one thing, Doc, to be a Christian, but it's another thing to actually have to have life situations coming up against your Christianity, your walk, your talk. You, what you believe. You know, don't you know your belief in God will be challenged? Don't you know that it's going to be challenged? Or in, in fact, it may have already been challenged on all walks of life. If you're, if you're weak when it comes to lust of with a woman, then guess what? The, the, then Satan will allow you to, uh, to be challenged to see if your spirit man inside of you will uh, not allow the flesh to overtake you, to succumb you. So what are you saying? Hey, we need to make sure that our spirit is going to continue to stay strong. It don't, just because you got a spirit don't mean that it's not going to be touched. Just because you have a spirit don't mean that your spirit is not going to be challenged. And John's, he was challenged when he was in prison. He was in, challenged when he was going through. I heard a man once say to me the other day that when I was in prison, he told me that this guy got me so angry that I just had to forget about that I was a Christian for one moment and I had to start whooping up on that guy. And I'm like, okay, if you was wrong answer, that's not the right answer because we do go through things, but we have to understand we have to understand that life is real. Hey, it's real. Things do really happen. But guess what? The spirit of God is real as well. Just as we said 
that things within the flesh really gets to us at times. We talk about people right now, money prices, prices of cash and money and store prices, meats and produce and the breads and the pies and the meats and the, uh, all these things in the stores or Best Buys and Walmarts and uh, Targets and all these stores, prices are going up and we're being challenged. But you know what? You don't have to allow the things that is challenging you to get inside of you. Because greater is he that's in you than he that is in the world. John wanted to know, was Jesus the one? John asked his disciples to go and ask Jesus this question, are you the one? Are you the one? And I just said a second ago, prior to John asking, uh, saying to his disciples, Jesus, are you the one? John in the Jordan over there was saying, hey, behold, the Lamb of God is here. That take it away the sins of the whole world. John over there was saying to all these people and his, his, um, his disciples that I must decrease and now he must increase. John was, was that one. So what's your point? I'm, 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 I'm saying that he was so spiritual over here, and now he's locked up in prison. And now he's asking his disciples to go ask Jesus, are you the one? Are you the one? Well, and hey, when your flesh starts going through things, you still being a Christian, you still going through things, still dealing with things, hey, you, it's going to determine what's, what, what's the strongest inside of you. Ja, Jesus, again, says, are you the one? So what Jesus was actually seeing he basically had to ask the question, are you the one? Because sometimes seeing things in the, our own natural eye will try to help us to determine that that's going to be the consequences that what, that what we see is actually going to happen. Is seeing really believing? Well, I thought we walked by faith and not by sight. But here, John actually saw that, number one, that he's locked up in prison. That he, and those was real bars. He saw the bars. He saw the chains with his arms wrapped up in the chains and his feet. He basically saw it. Is seeing really believing? And then two, John basically asked, is Jesus the one based on what he was feeling? He didn't feel like, uh, hey, that he was going to be getting out. So he tells John, he tells the disciples, that is, to go ask Jesus, are you the one? Are you the one? And what does that mean? John wanted to know, are you the Messiah? Yeah, I just said a second ago, he wanted to know he was proclaiming the Messiah over here. But now he tells his disciples, are you the one? Are you the one? Because I don't, hey, I don't see it right now. Well, how do you know John the Baptist didn't see at that time when he was in prison that Jesus was the one? Well, if he would have saw it, that Jesus was the one, he never would have sent his disciples to ask Jesus the question, are you the one? John was feeling what he was feeling and he felt that Jesus was not the one because he went and told his disciples to go ask Jesus, are you really the one? See, sometimes in life, when you go through some stuff, it'll make you question, is Jesus really the one? Is this the one that I'm praying to? Is he actually the one that's going to help me to deal with what I'm faced right now? Is he the one?
The Bible says that we walk by faith and not by sight. We walk by faith and not by sight. Can I say this to you? Hey, there's going to have to be times when you're going to have to determine what's, what's stronger inside of you, your spirit man or your flesh. Because there is going to be circumstances that's going to be lined up or have already been lined up in front of you for you to determine to see, A, and it don't mean that you're going to feel some kind of way, but only one's going to win. Only your spirit's either going to win or your flesh. Hey, and if your flesh wins, you, you're not going to be a happy camper in the end because your flesh will only want the response that the flesh could only get. And that is that it wants to be satisfied. This is the month that our church is, is in many churches all throughout America and the world is fasting. And they're fasting simply because of their spirit, to bring their spirit to a point of being so strong. And they're also uh, killing their flesh, crucifying their flesh, bringing their flesh under subjection, bringing their flesh under subjection so that then the spirit of God will be able to control it. Can I say something to you? Hey, the only one inside of you right now that can control what you're dealing with in your life is the Spirit of God. There's people that have given New Year's resolutions on losing weight, New Year's resolutions on cigarettes, New Year's resolutions on thousands of other things. And a lot of times, these same people, they deal with, say, deal with these not doing the thing that they say that they don't want to do, but hey, come the third month, May, June, July, they're right back to square one, simply because it was their flesh that was trying to stop their flesh from doing what their flesh shouldn't be doing. See, the flesh can't control the flesh, but your spirit can control your flesh. And the results that your spirit will get from controlling the flesh is astronomical. It's out of this world. It's awesome. It's wonderful. It'll make you walk up. It'll make you wake up in the morning and say to yourself, "Man, I want to give. I want to help in, improve my spirit some more. I want to feed my spirit some more through the Word of God. I want to give my spirit what it needs, because we like the results that the spirit gives, vice versa that the flesh. And then later on, hey, later on in the scriptures, and then Jesus. Did you see what Jesus said? Jesus says later on in the scriptures, in that same scripture, Jesus said, blessed is the man uh, who don't fall away, who don't fall away because of me. Blessed is the man who goes through some stuff. Blessed is the woman who's go through so much stuff in their life, but even at the same time, don't fall away. Don't go back to the world because of how I'm dealing with the circumstances and the situations. Of, hey, God, listen, the Lord says my ways are not your ways and my thoughts. I, I, he, he said, I got this for your life. I, I, I'm handling this thing for your life, but, but I'm not doing it the way you think I'm doing it. See, your mindset is basically not, it's tempered. It's not the way it should be. See, you're, you're basically feeling the bars and you see it, you're in the prison and you're, you go, see, but uh, listen, I'm God. And because I'm God, I, I do things differently. My ways are not your ways. My thoughts are not your ways. How I do things is different, but you just got to trust me. That's, when Jesus, that's why Jesus said, blessed is the man that don't fall away Be, because of the way I handle things, the way I do things. John was baptizing and, and he was going for, uh, Jesus was doing all these wonderful works and helping people and John is in prison and G Jesus says, John, blessed is the man that don't get upset, that don't start cussing and swearing and falling away. Blessed is the man that can continue to 
to do what I've called him to do, to know he has an assignment. Blessed is the woman that knows her assignment as a woman and don't fall away because it appears that I'm not helping her do what she wants me to do. But just let her have faith and say, I don't know how God's doing it. I don't know how he's going to do it. It don't seem like he's doing it, but I'm not going by what I see. I'm going by what I know. Yes, John said, I know you're the one. You're the one because I know my disciples told me that you're, you're, healing, the blind. you're healing the blind. You're touching the lame. Jesus never said, now, when, when his disciples came and when John's disciples came and asked John, were you, he's the one, John, Jesus never said, yes, I'm the one. He said, you go tell John all of these things. You tell John about my resume. Tell John about the things that I've done. Tell John, yes, the lame walk now. Tell John, yes, hey, those that died, I raised them up. Tell John that, hey, you tell him about my resume. Tell John the things that I've done already. You tell John that I'm, I'm he who was and who is to come. Tell John that I'm the alpha, the omega. I'm the beginning and I'm the end. You tell John. Sometimes life just happens. Don't worry. Farmington Motorsports will get you back on the road and at a fair price. From towing to tires, emissions to transmissions. Our ASC certified techs do it all. Farmington Motorsports is a family-run business. We're a Napa Auto Center and AAA approved. We work on all makes and models from preventative maintenance to major repairs. And every repair is backed by our two-year, 24,000-mile nationwide warranty. When life happens to you, don't worry. Farmington Motorsports. 